You know when the Connor Stallions alleged Michigan sign stealing story first broke, my initial reaction was, really? That's it? Sign stealing? Anyone who knows anything about college football knows that every single program at every single level of college football is looking for every single advantage they can find and oftentimes trimming corners, completely cutting corners, and skirting NCAA rules to do so. But as the story grew, as more and more evidence, or at least reports of evidence, have come out, I have completely flipped my tune. Welcome to Darren Talks Ball. I, of course, am Darren Graham. I am your host, and I am really, honestly, not so excited to be here today as I myself am a Michigan fan, having started a college football podcast and YouTube channel in the season in which my team ends up getting caught in a massive cheating scandal. So this will be another video with a somber tone. It'll be another video looking at the Michigan sign-stealing scandal as more details come out. And I hope you'll stick along with me. I hope you will subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are already seven subscriptions over our season goal. So I appreciate all of you from the bottom of my heart following, liking the videos, helping this channel grow. You are as much a part of this as I am. I was reading an article, funnily enough, in the Washington Post, which is the, also happens to be the newspaper that broke more of the story last night, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But I was reading an article in the Washington Post right before hopping on today, and it was an interview with a former NCAA investigator. And what that investigator had to say was really interesting. In one part of the interview, they said, you know, you almost never catch the good cheaters in NCAA football, with the way things are structured, with the with the the budgets the way they are, the size of the programs and the scope of the programs, and the size and scope of college football and all the money involved. You almost never catch the good cheaters, but every once in a while, you catch a bad one. And I think, as Michigan fans, we need to be honest and sincere with ourselves about the fact that, as of right now, in this recording, at 8.18 a.m. on the 26th of October, year of our Lord, if you believe in that kind of thing, 2023, Connor Stallions may be the dumbest violator of NCAA rules in the history of NCAA rules. Not using the private setting on your Venmo account and your PayPal account, whatever it was, to supposedly buy tickets and transfer the money to several people to spy on other teams. And I say spy because it is illegal to do so is something that, as the article stated, drug dealers would scoff at. Low-level drug dealers would scoff at. As the story has progressed, I think a lot of you who follow the channel and have watched my other videos know that I have been hesitant to really say anything damning about the program yet or make any claims that... This is absolutely 100% true. I've been kind of in wait and see mode. But with the news breaking last night, that there are apparently several hard drives around Schembechler Hall with video evidence of scouts having gone to opponents, future opponents' games and recorded video of the sidelines and of those hard drives being accessible to several Michigan coaches. And just the nature of this. You know, a couple of weeks ago, the statement, vast network of spies, was in an article, I believe, 
released by Pete Famel. And I think most of us Michigan fans kind of laughed at it at the time. We all kind of laughed at it because, number one, Pete Famel, and this was a big reason why I didn't really believe these stories fully to begin with at first, because Pete Famel largely has connections within the Woody Hayes building in Columbus, Ohio. But nonetheless, I thought they were hyperbolic, <laughs> to say the least. But now we have the Washington Post, a much more credible outlet. We have other outlets and other reporters reporting on the story and releasing information. And it all seems to be very bad and bleak for the Michigan program at this time. And not to be too wrapped up in myself for a minute, but... I have to admit to you guys, I'm having a difficult time with this one. I'm a new YouTuber, at least in the sense of covering college football. I've been somebody who enjoys, obviously, being in front of cameras. I'm comfortable in front of cameras. I'm comfortable talking publicly. I'm also a musician. I've played in bands that have toured, and I'm used to being on stage. I don't mind having a camera in front of me or people watching me. But I'm new to this whole covering a college football scandal <laughs> on your college football YouTube channel. I started this channel this season with this being the least of my concerns. I thought this season was going to be bright, and there are definitely many aspects of this that will be bright, and this will be, I believe, still a great season for Michigan football if we look at it in the right light. But I've struggled, and I'm, I'm going to admit to you guys, I had trouble sleeping last night because I'm struggling with what to do with this information and how to present it to you guys. And I've basically come to this conclusion. And I know some other Michigan accounts are doing this, and I'm not going to judge them. Everyone grieves in their own way. Everyone deals with loss like this in their own way. So... If you're doing that out there, I'm not judging you. And if you're somebody who watches the content of a Steve Deese or a James Yoder, I don't even know what James Yoder is saying about this, <laughs> by the way, or an Isaiah Hole or somebody who's still in wait and see mode or somebody who is in full defense mode, I'm not going to judge you. But I feel like my responsibility to you as somebody who covers Michigan football, and once again, I would like to clarify, I'm just a fan. I don't have any connections whatsoever to the program. I've never met Jim Harbaugh or anyone related to him or anyone close to him in my entire life. But I feel a responsibility to be honest with you guys, to tell you guys what I really think. And what I really think is it may be time to burn this whole thing down and start over again because I am... Ashamed wouldn't be putting it in the right way. It wouldn't be giving it enough, it wouldn't be doing it enough justice how I feel. I became a Michigan football fan when I was seven years old. I was just a poor kid growing up in HUD housing. Got bullied a lot. Didn't have many friends. And for some whatever reason, I clung to Michigan football. Namely, Michigan Football Review, or whatever it was called at the time, the, the show that would come on Sunday mornings with Lloyd Carr. And I'd watch those shows, and I'd watch those games, and it was like my bright spot. And I know I'm getting really into myself for a minute, but like I said, we all grieve our own ways. I grew up a Michigan fan. I wasn't raised to be a Michigan fan. My dad is a car guy. My dad watched NASCAR and Formula One racing and worked on his cars. He, didn't, he couldn't care less about football. No one in my family was really a football guy. But I clung to it nonetheless, and I grew up with it. And I traveled the country, and I worked on oil pipelines, and I worked all over in the oil field for eight years 
with my Michigan hat on, talking to other college football fans I'd be on job sites with. I ate year after year after year of shit piled on by Ohio State fans. I worked in Ohio the year that Michigan lost in 2013 on a last-second two-point conversion try that failed. And I feel like many of you out there have similar stories. The past 10 to 15 years have been hell for Michigan fans, largely. There have been bright spots. There have been victories over Notre Dame. There have been victories over MSU. There have been victories over Penn State. A few years ago, I remember the, the one great Dylan McCaffrey game against Penn State comes to mind, and the one great Dylan McCaffrey slash, who was it, Shea Patterson game against Wisconsin a few years ago. But we have lived in either hell or purga- or 10 and 2 what Penn State is living in right now, purgatory, for the past 15 years. And in the last two to three years, we've finally experienced success. We've finally experienced what we all knew that this team could do with this coach, with this staff, with the recruiting the way it's been. It's finally all come to fruition. And whether you like it or not, and like I said, my job here is to be honest with you guys. That's how I see this. I'm going to be bluntly honest with you guys. Because I think that's what you need. It may not be what you want in the moment, but it's what you need. In a lot of people's eyes, and I don't think it's just Ohio State fans' eyes or MSU fans' eyes right now, there's going to be a little asterisk next to the last couple of wins over Ohio State, over those Big Ten championships, over those college football playoff appearances. Now, will there be an actual hard form writing? Will banners be taken down? Will wins be vacated? Frankly, I don't know at this point. I made a Twitter post early this morning explaining that. You know, a lot of people defended this because it's merely technically just level two violations. They've made comparisons to the Tennessee investigation that went down a couple of years ago with Jeremy Pruitt. They've made comparisons to other things. The X factor here is that we've now reached unprecedented territory when it comes to sign stealing. This isn't merely just a coach watching some video and stealing some signs. This is, from all intents and purposes, looks like a legitimate operation that if Jim Harbaugh didn't know about, he should have. He should have. And I am... Ashamed isn't the right word for it. Beyond ashamed. I am... I am somebody who has made Michigan fandom a core part of my personality and my identity for the past, for all my adult life. And one thing, even through all those hellacious seasons where we got close and couldn't make it, or the 8-5 and season where Wilton Spate got hurt, or all the way back to the Rich Rod and Brady Brady Hoke years, the one thing you could hang your hat on as a Michigan fan was you felt like you, you were a fan of a school that did things the right way. You felt like even if you fell short against Ohio State and you weren't making the playoff, or even if you gave up a loss to MSU, I know I'm not a big believer in moral victories in life and in football especially, but you just felt like you could still be proud of this program. You could still be proud of these kids. You could still be proud of these coaches because they did things the right way. They did things on the up and up. Now, I can still be very proud of these kids, and I will be. And maybe that's where we'll transition into what I, how I feel and what I think for this season going forward. I am still damn proud of these kids, and I feel so terribly for them because they didn't deserve this. And you see the talent on the field, and the most enraging question I have in all this is why. Why? Why did you feel like you needed to go to these lengths? Whether Jim Harbaugh knew or whether Jay Harbaugh knew or whether anybody on the staff knew, Connor Stallions and certain people within the program clearly thought they needed to go to these lengths. Why? And to do it so stupidly, it's asinine. 
It's I, I, I listen a lot to the Behind the Bastards podcast. I know that's kind of way out there for a lot of you, and many of you probably haven't heard of it. But it it's basically what the name implies. It, it covers a lot of bastards from history in great detail, as well as famous criminals. And there's a lot of very dumb criminals on it. There's, a, there's an episode that just came out about G. Gordon Liddy, the guy who was responsible largely for the Watergate scandal. And there's so many similarities in how this seems to be an exercise in ego of a, a stupid man who thought he was smarter than what he really was in Connor Stallions. Again, to do this without your Venmo, even on the private setting... But I'm still proud of these kids. And I feel terrible for them. They don't deserve this. They don't. And we can sit here and we can argue over how much sign stealing really has as an impact on the game. I don't think it has that much impact. I think these wins over Ohio State the last couple of years and wins in the Big Ten championships and wins over Michigan State and all of that are still credible in my eyes. But they'll always be forever tainted in the eyes of other college football fans around this country and throughout the globe. These kids don't deserve that. They deserve a chance to go out on the field and have a support system behind them that isn't built on lies. I know a lot of you Michigan fellow Michigan fans out there may disagree with me on this. Like I said, we all grieve in our own ways and we all process information in our own ways. So feel free to comment if you think I'm going too far with any of this. Feel free to feel free to say something if you think if you see it a different way. Please do. I'm again just a fan with a small startup little YouTube channel. I'm not saying claiming to know everything with this and I'm not claiming that my opinion is any more important than any others. But I'm enraged as a Michigan fan. I am up as upset and simultaneously disappointed in my team as I possibly could be. This is fucking terrible. I think it is time to start considering the idea that this whole thing, the Jim Harbaugh experiment, may need to be burned down to the ground and we may need to start over. And that may, that may as well be, that may very well be how Jim Harbaugh feels about it too. I don't like to get into the speculation business, but I could see an outcome where he leaves for the NFL, Pete Carroll style, and we're forced to start over again. I think hope is an important thing to cling on to in these moments. Because it still it gives us drive, it gives us reason, it gives us purpose as fans. I know I'm talking about this like it's a funeral. <laughs> I know in the large scope of the world, this is not that important at all. And I can especially say that now as a father and a husband. I'd much rather have my football program be going through something like this than, God forbid, anything in my personal life or anything in any of yours personal lives or anything like that but my hope going forward is that this gets cleaned up and that this program can gain some relevant credibility on the national scale again again i apologize for my voice being a little raspy in this one too <clears throat> i need to get a cough button that's my next thing So I don't know if this episode was any good to you if you're watching as a Michigan fan. <clears throat> if you're watching as an Ohio State fan or a Michigan State fan or whatever team you're a fan of, let me know what you think. Am I going too far? Am I overreacting? Or is it not far enough? Because I don't know where it goes from here. And I'm going to be bluntly honest with you guys. I think anyone that's 
saying that they have any idea of what happens from here is recklessly speculating. We are now in uncharted territory when it comes to NCAA rules violations around sign stealing. I cited this the cases the other day, previous cases of sign stealing. None of them were this deep and involved this many people from what the reports are saying so far. And I mentioned the report, what the reports are saying so far because I want to take a lot of this with a grain of salt as well because these are just reports. This is just stuff that's been leaked to the press. There's still a lot to come out on this. But there's so much out there already that's super damning for this program. I can't, I can't imagine it getting any better. I can't. And I have to be honest. I do. I feel like that's a good place to wrap this up. I was going to go on camera for this one, but I never did. Oh, well. Probably best that I not go on camera right now. I would probably end up swinging my arms around as I try to elaborate my feelings on camera and end up hitting something, <laughs> breaking something. I want to thank you guys once again for subscribing to the channel and following along. If you haven't already, please do. Please subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notified. I'm also going to be recording an episode of This Week in College Football today where we won't have to talk about this scandal. <clears throat> Excuse me once again. And instead, we'll talk about the larger scope of things. We'll break down some games. I will give you guys my top 10 for the week, my top 10 power ranking. So if you're into that kind of thing, I'd appreciate if you subscribe and follow along for that. Also, don't forget to like this video. That's how this video ends up in the algorithm. More eyes then get on the video, and thus more eyes get on the channel. Like I said, I'll be back with an episode of This Week in College Football later today that will premiere tonight at 8 o'clock. And until then, always and forever, go blue.